Hi there booktube and welcome to a new tag. Uh, this is the scavenger hunt tag which I'd seen uh, earlier um, but I'd sort of done a, a version of it uh, when I did the old books tag because I literally have to scavenge amongst my very chaotic uh, sort of bookshelves out in the shed. So I turned that into a scavenger hunt element and I think there's about 25 questions on this one and to have, because the element of this is about the book covers. I don't have a photographic memory of, of various book covers because obviously it varies as to what editions you've got and I don't really take notice of it. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear the thought of doing a live scavenger hunt for these. But when I saw Sean the Book Maniac's version, because Sean is moving house in Tokyo, and um, so he was using that as a, an excuse for him to do the scavenger hunt. But he'd, put, he'd already selected the books, obviously, as part of his sort of packing up stuff. So there wasn't the actual live action scavenger hunt element of, uh, of that. So I thought, OK, oh, uh, yeah, this is how many books are involved. This is this is why I say it's going to take a long time. Um, so also someone challenged me. You know, I commented on Sean's uh, Sean the Book Maniac scavenger hunt. Uh, a couple of the titles he pulled he asked a couple of questions about and I responded to those and then one of his followers challenged me to to do the the tag because she said I, she thought I'd do a really good job of it so that sort of tipped me over the edge to to do this so as I say there's about 25 um, questions I've got two or three for just a couple of them because I wasn't sure quite what the question was getting at so I'm not going to talk about the content of the books this this does seem to be a tag about the covers so, uh, you know, most of the books I'm not really going to comment on. Some of them have got, you know, reviews on Booktube on my channel, some don't. So these are the challenges. Um, you have to find a book with the following on the cover. So question one, find a book with a vehicle on the cover. So a short history of tractors in Ukrainian. I think a tractor counts as a vehicle, doesn't it? I mean, it's got wheels and an engine. Um, a very whimsical read. I enjoyed that at the time. Question two, a, a challenge two, a close-up of the face. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to show up. Now, the reason, this is the earliest I've ever filmed a booktube video because the light uh, comes into my bedroom where I'm filming this in the morning. Uh, what are we? 22 minutes past nine. So, um, I really hope the face on Don Dillillo's, uh, what's it called? Zero K, which is a book about death and cryogenics and all of that. Yeah, it does show up, hopefully. It's a rather beautiful cover and a typical DeLillo book. Uh, challenge three, character covering their eyes. Now, how's this for a cover? Wow, look at those tattoos on the geezer's hands. So this is by Nikolai Lili, Lilin, who's a Russian. His first book I read, uh, this is his first book, but I read his second book before this called Free Fall about a sniper in the Russian special forces during the wars in Chechnya. And that was an unbelievable book so then I went back this is about his childhood in so in a Siberian community although they seem to be in Moldova rather than Siberia but anyway um, this book has been accused of having fictional elements which may or may not be true I don't know but it's a great it's a great read it is a very alien culture it's a real throwback culture and you know it's a gangster culture or at least his wing of it was hence the tattoos and stuff so there is a person covering up their eyes challenge four a silhouette. Okay, I'm not quite sure the definition of a silhouette. I mean, I hope this counts. This is Tim O'Brien, The Things They Carried, which is a book about Vietnam and about the need to preserve stories for people, you know, in extreme situations such as war. It's a silhouette done in the American flag, which I think is brilliant. But if that doesn't count, I've got a problem. I, I, I'm surprised at how many different books I had for silhouettes, but I wanted Tim O'Brien because I love that book so much. So that's definitely a silhouette guy with a briefcase and a broken arm. This is called Vacation by Deb Olin Unferth, which I think was sold to me as a sort of fairly experimental book. It is kind of, but I, you know, I was ho-hum about it. Um, next challenge, a character with their back turned. Yes, the Enfant Terrible of French letters, uh, Michel Hoelbeck, Platform, which was his, was this his first novel? No, that's mine, was his first novel. Um, well, you know, you know who Huelbeck is, and most of you probably hate him uh, for the reasons that this cover alludes to, but I love Huelbeck. Next challenge, a uh, different colour spine to the cover. So this is The Rebels by Hungarian author Sandor Bure, a blue cover, and a sort of garish, I don't know what you call that, cerise, is it? 
spine and a green back. So it's actually all three different colours. Uh, next challenge is three characters on the cover. I found this really diff surprisingly difficult. There are really, I, of all my books, I don't know how many I've got, a thousand maybe. Um, I could only find two that had three three covers. Now the first one is called Three by the British 1960s experimental author called Anne Quinn. And the book is about a menage a trois. It is about three people in relation, you know, the relations between them. But the cover, I'm not sure whether you're going to count this because they're clearly three different images of the same woman who I assume is Quinn. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So maybe that doesn't count as three different people. So in case it doesn't, even though that absolutely encapsulates what this book is, I've gone for Walter Greenwood, Love on the Dole, the Penguin edition, where I hope you can see there, you know, there's a husband and wife. Uh, the book is about sort of the Great Depression in Britain in the 30s. And these guys, you know, looking for work. And I hope you can see that she's got a baby uh, that's sort of popping out there. Not literally popping out of her, you know. I mean, she's got it, uh, you know, ensconced in her clothing. Um, so that's three people, husband, wife and very young child. Um, next one is a bird. Uh, I'm surprised at how many covers I have which have birds on them. There were so many to choose from. I've gone with what, probably my favourite of the books with a bird on. Solo by Rana Dasgupta, which I finished a week ago, two weeks ago. It was a great read. I've got a dedicated video to this. Uh, what's the bird? I don't even, you know, some ornithologist can tell me what bird that is. Uh, next one, a challenge. A book cover with a moon on. Well... I was really surprised I only have one. And that's Mark Haddon's The Curious Dog in the Nighttime. And it's not a full moon, but there is the moon. And what a great book that is. Uh, a Sun. Okay, well, I was really depressed because the only book I have with a sun on is one of my most hated books, Ian McEwan's Solar. This is such a dreadful novel. But that is unaccountably The Sun. Uh, next challenge, An Object on the Spine. Okay, so this is Valeria uh, Luiselli's The History of My Teeth. And a very charming and whimsical book it is. And there is a tooth. I don't know if that's a molar. It looks like a canine, I think. Not that I'm a dental expert. On the cover. A tooth is an object, especially when it's fallen out. Um, character holding something. How do you like them apples? Or apple singular. The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Groot by David Mitchell. Um, so David Mitchell writes these sort of fantasy books like Cloud Atlas and Bone Clots, which I really don't like. But when he writes, you know, straight literature, straight fiction, for want of a better word, like this, which is historical fiction set in Japan, it's fantastic. And uh, there's obviously a Japanese woman holding an apple. Um, two books with the same colour scheme. OK, well, I cheated on this because it's... <laughs> Fitzgeraldo, this is what they do. All their books look the same. Same colour blue, same white calligraphy. Ha 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 ha. As it should be. Um, an animal on the spine. Okay. This is um, Scarlet Thomas's The End of Mr Y. Which, as you can see, there's a mouse there. And I'm only showing you the front cover because the same mouse is on the spine, but it's not as clear. So it's, it's the same mousey dude. This is a great read. Uh, no, it wasn't her debut, but it's the one that made her. Um, an Ampersand. Aha, okay. This is A, B and E by some author called Mark Nash. And there's not one Ampersand, there's two, there's three. Um, so this is my debut novel. Uh, it's A, B and E because it's A and E, as in accident and emergency, because one of the characters is a nurse. And it's B and E, as in breaking and entering, because the other character is a mole, gangster's mole. Um, that was the conceptual cover I had. Um, it took me nine years to finish the book, because I can never work out how to end it. Uh, but I had this cover, or a version of it, um, in my head for many of those nine years. And then I, you know, the book came out, and I started doing readings and stuff, and, and suddenly, I, within... A month, a better cover came into my head. So, you know, even though I've had this cover in my mind for, you know, say six years, within a month, boom, better idea. So um, you can't get a hold of this anymore, uh, unless you're known to me personally, um, because it no longer exists in print. It's only in the Kindle version, which has the new improved cover. Unfortunately, though, the new improved cover has lost the ampersand. So this is a, you know, an artifact. Um... Character wearing a necklace. Well, you know, what a hip-hop book this is. 
um, you know, gangster rap chain with the geezer's name Slick, the character's name. Uh, and this is a surprisingly good read. It's um, about a sort of a guy who sort of come, you know, he's sort of street and, and sort of PR and, and a bit of a hustler, but he, come, he comes uh, to sort of form a relationship with his mother and her child, and he, you know, he's very it's surprisingly tender. Um, a book you read at least two years ago. Um, Cambodia by Brian Fawcett. So, um, actually, sorry, Cambodia is, is, is only part of the title. A book for people who find television too slow. What an interesting book this is. So every chapter starts with a short story, a bit of fiction, and then it's, it's followed by an essay, uh, mainly on colonialism. And it is about, you know, our sort of dumbed-down TV minds that 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 force it is is getting to grips with here to you know so that the, the you know the horrible recent history of cambodia is not trivialized is not packaged into news news item bites but you know he sort of is encouraging us to to you know to get to grips with what it was what you know um, the much bigger picture of, of what went on there this is a surprisingly good read and uh, you know i don't know if he's written anything else i'm gonna have to reread this one day um a book you read from the library? Well, obviously I don't have it. Um, it's Ken Alders, The Measure of Things, which is the story, true, you know, it's a non-fiction, story of how the French defined the measurement of a metre, because they'd been using metres, but they wasn't standardised. So in the late 18th century, two scientists stroke mathematicians uh, went around uh, the whole of France and Barcelona, triangulating from sort of three points that were on hills and stuff and measuring it and they you know they used all these calculations to define the meter and it's a fascinating story because it was in the middle of the French Revolution and of course uh, Lavoisier the chemist was executed as an aristocrat and you know these two guys were challenged on their way you know what are you doing you're clearly you know bourgeois or aristocrat education and you know that it looked as though they weren't going to be able to complete their task but they did and then one of the two was racked thereafter that he'd got his calculations wrong. It's a great read. And um, uh, it's in one of my upcoming Six Degrees of Book Separation uh, videos because it directly feeds into my upcoming novel. So watch this space. Um, a book you read at least two years ago. Um, oh, I think I books have got slightly out of order. No, I've done that one. What am I talking about? A pronoun in the title. Duh. I predict a riot by Bateman. So cool, he doesn't even have a first name. He's just Bateman. So he comes to Northern Ireland. This is a very funny... I mean, he is a, he's a sort of comedy writer. Uh, murder, extortion and carrot cake. That sort of gives you an idea of what it is. Um, obviously, taken after the song by the Kaiser Chiefs, I predict a riot. And, you know, this is a great... You know, it's thick, but you get through it very quickly because it's, it's a light style. And an amusing read. Um, a verb in the title. How the Soldier Repairs the Gramophone by Sasha Stanisic, who was a Bosnian Serb who was forced to leave Bosnia during the Civil War and ended up in Germany. And uh, this, is a, this is a great book about his sort of... It's fiction, and it's very stylized. Um, about his his Bosnian childhood and upbringing and the, the sort of extended family, it's very quirky. And then it gets a bit more serious when he's in Japan in uh, Japan in Germany in exile. But you know how the soldier repairs, being the verb, the gramophone. Um, by a male author. Well, you know <laughs> I've got a thousand books and um, God knows how many of those by men, but you know for no particular reason I went for Mikhail Bulgakov the master of the margarita what a classic read this is I only read it quite recently and I think some people sort of get put off that they don't know the personalities of the but in the Russian revolution that he's alluding to but that doesn't matter it's, it's just such a good read whether you know that stuff or not and I actually found that the, the notes at the end to who these these characters and these Soviet institutions were I found it really useful um, so all around that was a great book um, a shiny font that's metallic. Now, this is the other reason for doing it early in the morning with proper light, because I hope this is going to show up. This is David Vans, Legend of a Suicide. Now, you probably... It's not going to show up. But the the legend in blue and of a suicide in red, the fish scales and the author's name, David Van, 
are all ah yes can you see the fish scales how it's reflecting well the the fonts are the same it's clearer in the blue than the red but the red is also a bit shiny maybe in his name the david i don't know anyway you can see that the blue part of the font is shiny and the fish is um interesting book um flawed the first chapter is fantastic about you know his father's suicide and then it sort of has different versions of his life with his father before the suicide when they go into the woods and they live you know absolutely primitively which i found so much less engaging sort of bog standard hemingway but the the suicide stuff was brilliant in that um next a tagline well interestingly the tagline for this is not on the front cover it's on the spine which is kind of weird so this is called The 300 Million by Blake Butler. I've talked about this book before. And the tagline says, the best thing about planning to kill everybody in America is you can begin with anybody in America. And that's what this book is. It's a, 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 a psychopath called uh, Gretch Gravely, Gravely uh, who basically starts a death cult with the intention of killing everyone in America. Uh, but he gets caught, and then the other part of the story is the poor policeman detective who has to interrogate him. Who you know, this is you know, gra gravelly just sort of destroys this guy mentally. Um, a symbol that's not a heart. Okay, I think we can all agree that that is a symbol that has appeared now and again in in human history. This is Red April by a Peruvian writer called Santiago Roncagliolo. Apologies. And this is basically about sort of recent Peruvian history. It's a detective story, uh, you know, the, in the, you know, post um, the red, uh, what were they called? Um, Shining Path terrorists who were sort of year zero Marxist terrorists who held the country to ransom for many years and who were finally defeated. Um, so this is in the aftermath of that, when there's still that sort of pervading sense of, well, they, you know, they could still have members with guns in the jungles and the mountains or whatever. This was a great read, a really good read. I've not sort of followed up to see if he's done anything since. I ought to, really. Uh, oh, yes, still on symbol. OK, so if we're not accepting that as a single symbol, because it is a picture rather than, you know, a, a symbol as in a cartoon symbol there apathy by paul nealon that is a symbol man pointing a gun to his head because you know life is so alienating and you know this was a fun read uh okay next one a three-word title that was surprisingly difficult as well because books that have the in the title or a in the title are either two words or four words um house mother normal by bs johnson which i talk about in my dedicated um video on B.S. Johnson. This is a great read. This is this is a bit sort of Rashomon. So eight different voices in an old people's home and they have different varying amounts of, um, of um, Alzheimer's. Uh, and also the woman who's charged with looking after them, who's 42, has her own sort of agenda. So it's the same night through eight different points of view uh, and it's great. It's also quite funny, surprisingly funny given its, its subject matter. Um, a couple on the cover, well, again, I was surprised. I really struggled with this. But there again, I don't read chick lit and romance. So I've gone for a book that I didn't enjoy, but it does have a, a cover on the, on the on the cover on the cover. A couple on the cover. This is Henry and June by N.A.S. Nin. That's probably a, from the film. Didn't like the film, didn't like the book. Did, not particularly interested in Henry and June as characters in, in real life or as they're portrayed in fiction. But, you know, it's all I had. Um... A pattern on the cover. Okay, I'm not sure whether this counts as a pattern. You know, it's a it's a repeating pattern of cartoon depictions of ray guns because this is How to Live Safely in a Science Fiction Universe by Charles Yu. And you know, this is a four star fun read. But if you don't like that, if you don't accept that as a pattern, I mean, would you have that as wallpaper? Maybe in a kids' room. That is a pattern. No argument. Um, Leaving the Sea stories by Ben Marcus. So it's Ben Marcus short stories. I talk about it. Um, in my dedicated video on Ben Marcus, but you know, it's a rather lovely pattern, obviously about waves, but it's a sort of geometric based pattern. Uh, a book I haven't read. Okay, so I'm just going to dive randomly into my drawer of books to be read. And what have we got? We've got, oh God, I've been blocked the drawer up with all these thick, thick volumes. So, picky a book at random. Ha ha ha. How about this? David Foster Wallace, The Infinite Jest. 
need I say anything more? No. And finally, an anthology. Well, you know, I tend really not to buy anthologies because they are, to me, universally so patchy as to make me regret shelling out money for them. So I, I won in a um, the Brighton Digital Festival. I was performing in a Flash Slam and I won it. And one of the prizes was the best of British short stories, whatever year it was, 2014 or 15 or something. Uh, and it had a great story by Jenny Diskey, who's an established writer, and the rest were absolute dreck. And I thought, best short stories? My God, Britain's in trouble. Uh, but it's not, you know, it isn't because it's not representative of, of the literary talent that is in Britain. It was just a terrible, terrible anthology. So I really don't buy them. So I was struggling for this one, but then I saw in the title, Simon Vale, an anthology. Yay! So that gets me out of this one. So Simon Vale, if you don't know, was a sort of a uh, philosopher, an essayist, uh, uh, she was Jewish, uh, I think she was French Jewish, and she wrote about sort of uh, similar things to Hannah Arendt really, but I think more tinged with the personal and the spiritual uh, than Hannah Arendt, who was very much more a sort of social scientist and sort of political philosopher. I think Weil was, was much, there's much more to her writing. Um, so there you have it, you have my version of the scavenger tag, Got it in under 22 minutes. That's not bad for 25 questions. Um, I'm not going to tell anyone because I know this has been around for a long time. Um, as Sean says, we don't know the origin tag, uh, the origin of the tag, unfortunately, so we can't we can't reference that. But I will put Sean's version of this video in the description box. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, until next time. <laughs>